Hey, welcome back to Protector Season 2. Today, excellent guest, decades serving our nation, and he's continuing to serve, but in a different capacity now, Tom Spooner. Tom, welcome to the Protectors. How are you today? Thanks, Jason. Thank you for having me on here. And uh, today, so far, so good. Doing pretty good today. I love it. And you know, one thing I've I started doing lately is actually having a chat with the guest ahead of time. And it was great. I got some really great introspection on where you came from yeah. in your career and just kind of just touching base on the same things we want to touch base on. So let's just get right into it. Okay. Tom, can you give us a 30,000 foot overview of your career? Yeah, man. I'll give you the big chunky pieces. I came in in uh, 1990. A huge part of my story is, uh, uh, and I was in 82nd from 90 to 92. I was in uh, the big one, WW Desert, you know, uh, Desert Storm. (laughs) That's it. But um, so that was my introduction into the Army. Um, I was in the 82nd from 90 to 95. Uh, a big deal that plays into the rest of my story is uh, I got sober in 92. I uh, struggled with alcoholism at a younger age and, uh, and got sober young. So 18 years of my career, most of it in special ops. I was also a sober and active member oh. and all of that. So it's a huge part as we get to the where I'm at now. So uh so 90 to 95, 82nd, uh, 96 to 2001, I was in 7th Special Forces Group as an 18 Charlie uh, engineer, um, deployed to Central and South America uh, numerous times uh, pre-9-11. And um, then September 2001 uh, until the summer of 2011, I was out at Delta as an operator, uh, did 12 deployments, 40 total months time in combat. Um, I got my gamut of PTS, TVI, and alpha, whatever alphabet soup comes after <laughs> that, you know? So, um, yeah, so retired in 2011, a uh, huge advocate for veteran suicide. Uh, and then also a huge passion of mine is, uh, you know, is sobriety and helping others, you know, that struggle with the same things that I do. So, uh, uh, went on and did that. And then um, 2013, I met Josh and Elisa Lannon. Fast forward to 2016, we opened April 2016, we opened up Warrior's Heart uh, in Bandera, Texas. And uh, four years later, uh, a thousand folks coming through there. And wow. now I'm on the show with you. <laughs> <laughs> now you're doing podcasts and, and all sorts of good stuff, man. It's great. You know, we're, we're fighting battles on our streets every day, but you went on, you helped train law enforcement. Yep. So you know what they're going through. You know the stresses they're going through. And you know the dynamic that is a bit different than the military. Absolutely. You know, you, uh, policemen, police women, law enforcement officers in the street, they're fighting this war all the time. Absolutely. And I would, Jason, I would always tell them, uh, because whenever I did, you know, eight, nine years almost continuously is how I was making yep. a living when I got out. And I really got to see, you know, make tons of friendships and see behind the veil a little bit. And uh, and I would always tell the guys, you know, because, you know, between law enforcement and military, there's just utmost respect because we're all cut from the same cloth. And, of course, they would always look at me and it's like, oh, bro, but you did all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I said, this is the difference. It's a thousand times harder for y'all. I said, for these reasons, like, hey, we left this country and went to another country and yeah. did war. We came back and, and no one was trying to get me then or, you know what I mean? I was safe mm-hmm. because of y'all, because of the protectors, right? Because of our law enforcement. So I didn't even think nothing about it. They do that every morning when they leave to go and then come home. So that right there. You know, and then whenever it came to the stigma of reaching out for help, you know, I knew how bad, obviously, it was in the military. That's one of the reasons why I'm as vocal as I am, just talking about my experience, because I get it. But then I seen with law enforcement, how it's a thousand times even harder, because, uh, you know, you got to, you got to really try to get kicked out of the army, right? Like you... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you might lose a special job. You might lose, you know, mm-hmm. a security clearance. I mean, you could, but you're not losing your means of 
income for your to provide yeah. for your family. Whereas in law enforcement, guys screw up uh, or are perceived screw up, or they or they reach out for help and they're as received as a liability. You know, depending on the department. Mm-hmm. You know, then you're talking about like, okay, now I can't feed my family. You know, so I never had to experience that that level of or that decision making process. I had to experience like, hey, if I go ask for help, it may impact my career, and my future. Uh, I, I did experience that. Uh, but I've never had to experience like, hey, I've got to put food on the table, you know, for my family. That's a whole different decision making process. Yeah. And it's tough, tough, tough. And it's department dependent. We talked about that. Absolutely. In the you know, some departments are like, hey, you know what? You come forward. We're going to take care of you. You're good to go. You're not going to lose your gun. The first thing that happens in a lot of departments, I don't know what the percentage is, but as soon as you say, I'm not feeling too good today. I'm tired. I, I'm thinking dark thoughts. The first thing you do is take away your gun. In law enforcement, the gun and a badge, when they go, that's your, I can't say it's just your identity, but it's like your means of protection. It's your means of, it's your livelihood. Mm-hmm. And when you're sitting in a rubber gun desk, wondering what the hell did I just do? Right. Wondering about, Hey, you know what? Am I going to be able to, you know, take care of my family? But the other thing too, about that is a stigma. And you know, this just as well as I do, or even more because you're, you're, you're seeing it all the time in warrior's heart and you've been sober for a reason is that when you deal with stigma, a lot of times you deal with it in different ways, whether that's alcohol, opioids, or any other type of something to numb that pain, to numb that feeling. Yeah, man. And we've, like you said, the beauty that we've seen over four years is, uh, is, is all spectrums, you know, where guys, thank God, you know, know that they need help, but they kind of come in all under the radar. You know what I mean? They take some leave and they're there. It's happened in the military also. The cool thing is, is whenever we see these departments that uh, these sheriffs, these chief of police, whoever, you know, their bosses, they send them, they come to Warrior's Heart, they get cleaned up, they get trained up. And now they're right back into the fight, even mm-hmm. better than they ever were. Because now, like, they've really got their everything together, you know. And those, we had a guy that, that came through Warrior's Heart early on. Uh, who was was a sergeant whenever he came in into Warrior's Heart, cleaned up, trained up, back into the fight. He's the chief now. Uh, you know what I mean? So you can't really make that stuff up. So mm-hmm. the one thing that we have to do is like, I'm always big, like we, I can't fight stigmas. So I changed the narrative. Uh, and how you change the narrative, the most powerful way to change the narrative is testimonials. Yeah. You know, and um, and so and what we're doing here, you know what I mean? Like talking about it, getting people mm-hmm. to because I get it, man. I mean, at one time I was the, that guy like suck it up, you know what I mean? Kind yeah. of deal or just be tough. And then I learned I was young and inexperienced. And then I learned, you know what I mean? Hey, that's not the total answer. There's times for that. But then there's also times for healing. And I mean, we do it with pistol shooting, right? Like yeah. if a guy sucks at shooting his pistol, we we bring an expert in and there and you know, cut the learning curve, get him back on doing it. And it's like, Hey, why don't we do that with mental and emotional health? It's like this taboo voodoo kind of thing. It's like, Hey man, it is no difference than going to an entry school, going to a sniper school, going to a pistol. I mean, you're going to get a level yeah, of training. I agree. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people try to put it like it's super complex and all this stuff. It's like, no man, it's a lack of training. I mean, and when I say training, I'm not talking about death by PowerPoint, you know, 400 slides check the block on, okay, Mm -hmm. here's your suicide prevention. Like we've all been a part of, I'm talking about like real humans having real conversations with real solutions, you know, and that's, that's what gets our folks better. You know, it is. And you said that before, if you're not, and that's the thing about, I like the aspect of it. Warrior's heart isn't for everybody, nor should it be. You open it up to the warrior class and uh, hey, you know what? If that offends you, no problem. Go somewhere else. Yeah. Plenty of treatment facilities out there. But to be around the same brotherhood, sisterhood, the same warrior class, going through the same struggles you are, and maybe that policeman, policewoman, or, or whatever, has a story that's going to help out another warrior, a, you know, a soft operator, a regular grunt, or just a regular anybody. You don't have to be 
the tip of the spear to be feeling this emotional wreck and stigma, but maybe you learn from that other person. Absolutely, man. And like you said, because at, at the, because we're protectors, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're mm-hmm. protectors from that cut of cloth, you know, a stateside um, paramedic or law enforcement guy sitting next to a combat veteran you might say, well, their experiences are vastly different. And a lot of those experiences are, but the things that are eating them up is exactly the same. It's always the buddies that got killed. It's always the kids in the car wrecks. It's all, you know what I mean? It's always that abstract stuff that is so not, you know what I mean? Even though it comes with the, with the job, yep. you know, no one can be prepared for it. So even though the experiences might be very different, the thing that we're all trying to get through is is the exact same and i watch it happen now at war chart when you got a firefighter an emt a combat veteran an active duty guy you know what i mean all of those sitting together by the fire pit man and they're just and they're just mm-hmm. you know being themselves it's uh it's price you know what i mean it's it, the 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 sad and like amazing thing to me is is that we're the only one in the nation like warrior's heart is the only place in the nation that heals just our protectors, you know, but that's okay. You know, um, we'll keep on doing it. But like you said, it's the peer network has to be there. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't work any other way. Like a, a combat veteran sitting next to a business guy, you know, nope. or a law enforcement dude walking into a meeting and he's arrested probably at least half of them that are in there. It's like, even though we all have to do the same things and the same techniques and the same stuff, it's you can't build a peer network with that right it's just they're not peers so therefore it's just fluff you know so so that's another reason you know the peer network is was the huge thing everything out of warrior's heart comes out of our experience there's no theories we're running out there there's no hey let's try this kind of thing everything we do there is tried and true training methodology for what we know works Um, because you know just coming through warrior's heart on the 42-day program that's just a foundation that's just like going to an academy right or Mm -hmm. any other special school like hey you go there receive your training now you have to apply that training into the real world and a lot of times that's a very big like what do you say when you show up to the teams like hey i know what you learned in the schoolhouse but hey check it out this is how yeah exactly right (laughs) because this is the (laughs) real world like how do we take what we know is right and we know is good fundamentals and how do we modify them into a fact that makes it practical application? Mm-hmm. You know, because if it's if you're giving, coming at me with some theories and philosophies and all that stuff, man, like that's cool. I can have those conversations too. But at the end of the day, I want practical solutions that work in my life and on the job, at home, at two o'clock in the morning when I can't sleep. You know, all of those things. It's like, hey, what do I do? You know, and that's what we do out there give the basic fundamentals to create sober, confident warriors. I have my own personal stories and about addiction, uh, not with myself, but with a family member. We'll get into that in a second. Okay. But the thing is about your, about warrior's heart is having that, those like-minded people, and the light, the like-minded part of it is that they, at one time they step forward to be a protector, domestic yeah, or foreign. It's a different type of person yeah. than a regular addiction scenario. And I'll get into that now. So I, when I was working, it's kind of weird because I was working uh, counter narcotics as a special agent on the Southwest border. And I had a brother who was my oldest brother was struggling with cocaine addiction and the cocaine actually, um, because he was a, uh, you know, a great boxer. What he was doing is he was taking cocaine and ephedra and it essentially gave him a heart attack. So I moved him out, moved him out to San Diego to put him into rehab and try to get him straight. Every single addiction, uh, center I sent him to, he would end up walking out because the, <laughs> The ones I could afford, a lot of times, the the members at these places were either there as a halfway house, kind of to get out of the system, or they just weren't the right type of character. Now, if I got my eventually got my brother into a scenario where it's like, hey, 
we're taking all these sports like people, boxers, whatever, who eventually succumbed to addiction and, and got addicted to alcohol or drugs, he might have been able to thrive. Right. You know, and that's yes, the yeah. thing is like, and eventually he, you know, uh, eventually the cocaine destroyed his heart and he, he died. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, if you put them in that like-minded scenario, like warrior's heart, I think it's a perfect scenario and maybe other addiction centers and other facilities can take that mold and say okay we have a specific area just for you know um business people we have a scenario over here or a, a setup just for this type of class right and it's not rich poor or anything it's just like-minded people to fight it exactly i mean they they do the same for you know doctors you know mm -hmm. what i mean they have their own great it's just something about protectors. Like if, if we try to come forward and establish ourselves as a group, like there's this big uprising, but if they, if there's something that's for uh, carpenters only, you know, no one would, no one would say anything about that. Or, and again, the point is, is not to be different. Like you were saying, it's about just like-minded because we know there's no power of like, like peer pressure, right? There's no pressure like peer pressure, both good and bad, you know? And, so when the guys, like you said, are sitting around the fire and someone tries to start BSing, you know, I mean, that doesn't last long, you know? <laughs> because, exactly. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like embracing the suck, you know, you it all is. do it together. And if you have the like-minded, those relationships built over those 42 days will last those attendees the rest of their life. Guarantee it. Absolutely. Jason and Dick. We have, uh, other than just Warriors Heart folks, we have alumni and programming with that, but we created uh, within Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, Warriors Anonymous, right? So it's just a specialty meeting. They have uh, men's meetings, women's meetings, LBGT meeting. You know, I mean, there's all these different specialty meetings, except now we have one for Warriors. Uh, and they're in two locations. I mean, we physically have one uh, outside of Atlanta and outside of San Antonio, but we've run them, uh, three days a week now uh, online, you know, on a Zoom call, and it's uh, Wars Anonymous. So again, it's back to the like-minded people, even though, you know, we're online doing it and everything, you know, and you can have your face on there or not, you know, if a guy's in undercover work or something like that, it's, uh, you know, it's not hard for, for someone that knows how to do that stuff to, you know, not be seen or known their names, but still, uh, even if it's just listen to, even if it's just share with, you know what I mean? Or that kind of stuff. We, we've started that as an extension. Uh, number one, it was just to take care of our alumni once they left us. Cause like you said that we were talking about earlier of, you know, they lose that if you're, you know, end up the job always ends at some point, you know, either from retirement or getting hurt or, you know, something happened. It's like, Hey, what, you know, so I lose that task. I lose that purpose. I lose that drive. Like, well, what am I supposed to do now? You know, and for me, I just transitioned, you know, instead of the war overseas, the war at home, you know, and uh, alcohol and drug addiction, and PTS and traumatic brain injury. Uh, there's plenty for me to do in those realms. And, you know, and that gives me my task and it gives me my purpose. When I make up in the morning, feeling sorry for myself and my aches and pains are bothering me and I start poo poo lip in a little bit i remember yeah. why i'm here you know it's like <laughs> and and it's again it's back to our culture like we're we're servants like it's been in us to be protectors it's been in us to do the jobs that we did just because we are no longer on that job doesn't change who we are on the inside so for me i adopted this task and purpose of like hey it's, this is the war at home and there's more people dying in it than on the streets you know or in other countries so it's a worthy fight, you know, it's not a, like a empty affirmation or me pretending like I'm doing something significant. It's like, I know that I am doing stuff for significant. I got a phone full of texts and numbers that tell me a significant, you know what I mean? And, um, and reaching out to my brothers and sisters, it's like it's super important, man. I always tell people, I'm like, you know, it's not the virtue signaling out there. It's, it, you could tell the people who are genuine. Right. And I'm, I like how you brought up the text because I, you know, that's one thing I always tout. I'm like, everybody has one of these in their pocket. Yeah. A phone. 
you know, a lot of times this darkness that hits, hits us is 24 to 48 hours. If we can get through that, we're good for another, another clip. Yep. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes all it takes is a text, a call or something, acknowledgement from one of your friends or one of your peers, you know, and you could tell when your friends or peers are kind of on that teetering 24 to 48 hours of, uh, absolutely. And it's time just text people once in a while. It is, man. And I, and that's one of the narratives amongst our population. I try to change is, you know, common verbiage is, is like, Hey, if you need anything, let me know. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's what that just kind of comes out and we mean it, you know, and, uh, but yeah. then let's break it down a little bit. And the number one things, two things about me, how I made it. Number one, I'm not ever going to quit. That's how I was successful. And number two is I'm not ever going to let, I'm not going to ever going to ask for help. I'm not going to let my team down. I am not going to make my team suffer because I am suffering. Mm -hmm. And then you tell me, Hey bro, reach out if you need help. Unbelievable it, brother. So for me, and, and I don't guys or anything, I learned about it a few years ago. It's like, cause I was saying that also. And then I ran the whole thing through. It's like, we all know who's on that list. We mm -hmm. each of us has a few guys that are on the list, you know, and it's like, it's up to me to reach out to them, not wait for them to reach out to me. And uh, that's what I found is, is most successful, especially if I'm dealing with a guy like me. It's like, well, I'm, I'm not going to call him if he needs help and he can reach out, you know, cause I'm kind of pissed off at him or whatever. And it's like, for real, bro, come on. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome man it's like just hit them up like you said even if it's just a text hey man thinking about you hey what it, it cost me nothing you know it costs you literally two seconds a text yep and sometimes all, all it takes is you know and you a lot of times if you're in a good space you'd think everybody else is in a good space yeah that's true. you know it you just have new ttps now brother new ttps yep. One thing about Warrior's Heart is you want to bring a million warriors home and you guys just hit a big milestone. Let's talk about that. A thousand warriors. That's a lot. It really is. Yeah, man. It was a uh, huge, uh, super proud of that. Like I said, we started in, in uh, April of uh, 2016. Um, you know, so in April, by mid-April 2016, we had two guys sitting in there. You know, and the cool thing about it, but both of them were veterans and both of them were active law enforcement at the time whenever they came. So it was like that. But we started with two and then it was like, oh my God, we got eight, we got six, you know, and then um, because, you know, we didn't dump all, the, all this money into marketing and all this kind of stuff, we dumped it into the guys and gals, you know what I mean, into our programming, into it. So it took us time, you know, to get there. And, uh, you know, and now having a thousand warriors that have come through and trained up you know and everybody's on the different path like some came cleaned up got cleaned up trained up man and they were good to go still sober today you know just getting after it some folks you know have some relapses in between but everybody's just a different part on their journey mm -hmm. you know? and uh and we just meet everyone where they're at and try to get them to the next spot you know and uh it, but but the thing about this is it's just like any other tough training environment. Like you get what you put into it, right? It's uh, if I'm just half assing it, you know, and kind of just suiting up, showing up, you know, you know, get along and graduate yep. kind of deal kind of thing, then that's what I'm going to get out of it. And, uh, but the thing is, is that Warriors Heart, like uh, you have to, we have a coin out at the end where, uh, you know, where you earn a coin mm -hmm. so you, and you don't get that by just hanging out you know, uh, your mission file has to be complete. You attend all your meetings, right place, right uniform, right time. Don't be late. Don't be light. All that stuff that we always know about, you know, so it's not a place where you can just hang out, you know? So, because it, again, it goes back to our people and in our own experience, like we know what works. We know what is healthy. Uh, we know what works for our people, you know? So that's what we provide. And yeah, back to the thousand, man, is just because the reason why it's super important to me is like over 27 years, I've, I've sponsored maybe a couple hundred dudes, you know, uh -huh. that I've impacted, right? But just because of my bandwidth, just because the amount of time it takes, mm -hmm. you know, so 
to be able to have this mechanism called warrior's heart that transmits all that stuff that I have to give. And then everything on the clinical, everything on the medical side, you know, you know I mean? It's just super personally, it's just an amazing thing. And then professionally, you know, it's an amazing thing. And, uh, I love it, man. Obviously, you know, I, I kind of just can't shut up when I start talking about it. <laughs> so yeah, and you sh- as you should not, as you should not, and you should be proud. And, uh, you know, like I, like I talked to your publicist and everybody else, man, I've been, I've been wanting to document Warriors Heart and specifically you, um, since for, you know, as long, since I probably had the podcast in February, 2019, because it is so critical and it's so important to have out there. You know, one Ellie, thing about the protector community is coming forward and being able to discuss your addiction, discuss your, your problems with alcohol and, and just get help, man. You know, yeah, just do it. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that it's like, uh, we're not against alcohol. Like alcohol mm-hmm. is part of our cultures in law enforcement. I mean, in all of our protector warrior cultures, um, you know, and so it's not like we're against any of that. Mm-hmm. However, what I am against is if that alcohol or whatever consumption or self-medication is destroying your family and not making you, a, you know, good on the job. I've got a serious problem with that and as should everyone else, you know, and it's like, so it's just kind of, you know, cause people get all weird when they're around me, like if they're drinking or whatever, and it's like, Oh, you know, like the sobriety police has showed up, you know, sobriety like, police. like, Hey man, it's just, it's just not okay for me. Right. Is that doesn't mean it's not okay for others. And the same thing, like when it comes to PTS and all of that stuff, there's things that I experience, um, that you might not have a problem with if we both experienced it, but maybe Mm -hmm. it's devastating to me, you know, and that's like, I have a lot of buddies that we experience the same things. Some of them don't have any struggles and it's not because they're sociopaths. (laughs) It's because they have tools and they, you know, I mean, have their life experience and everything Mm -hmm. where, Hey, they could process it and move it on. There were some things that jammed me up, you know? So that's why, again, don't want to put a stigma on, on that piece of it either, where it's like, Hey man, if what I'm doing is working in my life, then continue. If what I'm doing is not working or it's jamming me up and stopping from me from being close to my family or to be in a a badass warrior, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like, well then it's like, hold up, but let's look at that. You know, just like anything else. It's like, okay, if I, if my chest is weak, I need to do more bench press, you know, (laughs) (laughs) But it's just stuff that we understand, you know, and uh, it's just about training, man. The right kind of training. Agree, brother. Agree. I've learned a ton today, Tom, and I'm just glad to be able to talk to you about it. Right. Being a nonprofit is not cheap. Absolutely not cheap, especially when it's kind of narrowed down to a warrior class protector community. Mm -hmm. How can we support warriors Heart? Yeah, so there's warriorsheartfoundation.org. Uh, that is uh, where you go on and uh, you can donate. You can buy some uh, T-shirts or whatever from the shop on the foundation side of the house. And, uh, and the, the biggest thing to me, it's always, uh, it's always about getting the word out. Yep. Uh, so if, uh, cause a lot of folks, you know, a lot of folks are like, man, I don't really have that money, man. It's like, it's not about money. You know what I mean? It's about, I mean, is, is money necessary and helpful? Absolutely. Hey, two bucks. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Any of it. But what I really like to empower folks with is like, if you want to help out this community that protects you, you and me every single day of our lives from nine 11 to a nine one one call, you yeah. know, talk about warrior's heart talk about like, man, I heard this thing, you know, get online, uh, check out warriorsheart.com, see what it's all about, because we all know folks that are struggling, and we can all just give, uh, just give our protectors a bump, you know, hey, thank, you know, one thing that I always do is I say, uh, thank you what you do, thank you for what you do for me and my family, and uh, everybody's used to it kind of like, thanks for your service, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. but but it kind of personalizes it, and I, it's on purpose, where like, I mean it, like, you know, what you're doing for me and my family is, is huge. 
and uh, and I appreciate it, and uh, and that's why I do what I do. Tom, thank you so much for coming on today. Man, thank you for having me, Jason. This was super cool. Appreciate it, brother.